Hi guys, haven't seen you for ages, or at least one week. My name is Irene, I'm editor-in-chief from Russia. I write and edit texts both in English and in Russian. Mm. Welcome to my channel where I tell you about my love to my country, culture and my mother tongue. And today I'm going to list 10 famous writers who wrote mortal books with captivating plots and gave us a legacy of thought-provoking notions. I will choose writers, books of whom you can easily find in English on Amazon. All links will be in the description below. Um, incidentally, this video isn't sponsored by Amazon. I wish it was, but come on, guys, only eight subscribers. I guess only my mom would like to pay for advertising at my channel. However, I wish, uh, I hope that the situation will improve for the better. And thank you for your support. Anyway, let's get back to books. Many Russian learners start from reading Russian literature in English. And only when they're carried away by these books, they start learning Russian. Number one. Fyodor Dostoevsky. I'm sure that's the first name that pops up in one's mind when it comes to Russian literature. You might have heard of Crime and Punishment. That's my favorite novel. The thing is that we studied it when we were in high school and as gullible kids we didn't get it. But later I fell in love with it. The novel is dismal and murky. It tells the story of a person going mad and murder, murdering an elderly lady with a hatchet. And now an abstract from it goes. You ought to thank God, perhaps. How do you know? Perhaps God is saving you for something. But keep a good heart and have less fear. Are you afraid of the great expiation before you? No, it wouldn't be shameful to be afraid of it. Since you have taken such a step, you must harden your heart. There is justice in it. You must fulfill the de demands of justice. I know that you don't believe it, but indeed, life will bring you through. You will live it down in time. What you need now is fresh air, fresh air, fresh air. While reading it, you may virtually walk along the streets of St. Petersburg the city where I live, absorbing its gloomy atmosphere. Um, by the way, once I took an audio walk along the streets of St. Petersburg, uh, where Dostoevsky used to live and work. I used audio guide Easy Travel, and if you ever go to our city, I strongly recommend you use it. It's not a commercial, it's just my advice, and the link will be below in the description. So, um, the thing is that it's in Russian, so you'd better learn our language. Regarding the other novel, The Idiot, I recommend that you not only read the book, but also watch our hilarious art house comedy movie Down House. It's a contemporary adaptation of a novel. You cannot watch it if you are under 18 or if you don't know Russian. Она на светофоре дорожку переходит, ножками своими нежными переступает. В одной ручке бутылочка водочки 0,75, в другой конфетка. Я так и обомлил. Полдня на этом светофоре и простоял. Думал, обратно пойдет похмеляться. Number two. Leo Tolstoy. I assume you know this bearded fellow. Frankly, I'm not a huge fan of his, but you should read his novels if you want to learn more about our country and language. Um, let's talk about war and peace. According to statistics, the vast majority of people lie about reading it. They either read separate volumes. For instance, my dad read about war and my mom read about peace. Or they simply read uh, the summary. I skipped long and tedious war descriptions. I read the whole novel only partially uh, and also I didn't like peaceful parts 
because mm, they seemed rather strange. It's like a soap opera in historical decorations. Now, here goes the quote. Man cannot possess anything as long as he fears death. But to him who doesn't fear it, every, everything belongs. If there was no suffering, man wouldn't know his limits, wouldn't know himself. A fun fact about this novel. I adore the British TV miniseries War and Peace and I didn't like any Russian versions. The British one depicts very accurately the plot, the characters and the, the atmosphere of Russian war with Napoleon in the beginning of the 19th century. I'm in love, my friend. <laughs> Number three, Alexander Pushkin. Perhaps not all of you know him, but if you ask a Russian who the most famous Russian writer is, they will say Alexander Pushkin. When I was at school, I liked his books, um, but my memory is quite big now. I can remember it them only partially and still I advise you Dubrovsky. It's similar to the story of Romer and Juliet. So two offsprings from struggling families fall in love. And here goes the quote. Tell him that riches will not procure for you a single moment of happiness. Luxury consoles poverty alone, and at that only for a short time until one becomes accustomed to it. Then you can read tales of Balkin. These are five stories told by a fictional narrator Balkin. Each of them discloses some characters who are typical to the epoch. Lastly, you should pay attention to Captain's Daughter. It tells the story of Emelian Pugachev's rebellion when Cossacks and peasants fought against the crown. Oh, and Pushkin also wrote fairy tales, but honestly, I can't recall anything specific. Number 4. Michael Bulgakov I've heard that many of you are aware of this writer and his world-famous novel Master and Margarita. It's a many-sided, sophisticated, philosophical um, novel with the elements of fantasy. There are a talking cat and a witch, um, a reference to the biblical stories and the description of lives of Soviet people. My, um, many people call this novel their favorite one, even if they haven't read it. So this is the tricky thing. And let me read you one quote. But would you kindly ponder this question? What would your good do if evil didn't exist? And what would the earth look like if all the shadows disappeared? After all, shadows are cast by things and people. Here is the shadow of my sword, but shadows also come from trees and living beings. Do you want to strip the earth of all trees and living things just because of your fantasy of enjoying naked light? You're stupid. I'll tell you briefly about two books, two other books that I fancy. Heart of a Dog. It tells the story of a dog who became a human. There is a marvelous Soviet movie of the same name. And also you might have heard of a young doctor's notebook. It's a bunch of stories about a doctor who comes to a village to cure people. You might have also seen 
a British TV series of the same name. Can you take me a little further? Oh! Anna! I'm the doctor. I am the doctor. What seems to be the trouble here then? Number five, Nikolai Gogol. I'd rather you started reading the complete tales of Nikolai Gogol. Um, I'd call them Gothic fairy tales. You will love this peculiar, amazing, hilarious characters, especially the devil. And also I recommend you to read uh, the novel Dead Souls. If you like history, this thing is for you. It tells the story of a landowner, of a person who pretends to be a landowner and he buys dead peasant souls in order to gain some power, aristocratic influence and money. And now let's listen to the quote. Countless as the sands of sea are human passions, and not all of them are alike, and all of them, base and noble alike, are at first obedient to man, and only later on become his terrible masters. Number 6. Anton Chekhov. I want you to read two books. The first one is 52 stories. Um, the writer was gifted to depict very precise portraits of his contemporaries. And my favorite short stories and novels, short novels of his are Ward Number no. 6 about a madhouse and A Man in the Case about a person who lived a boring, pointless life and followed all the rules but died being nobody. Also, you should read the plays of Anton Chekhov. Um, they are often staged and if you are a theater goer, so it's very good for you to read the plays first. My favorite ones are Three Sisters, Uncle Vanya and uh, The Cherry Orchard. And here goes the quote. And what does it mean, dying? Perhaps man has a hundred senses, and only the five we know are lost at death, while the other ninety-five remain alive. Number seven, Michael Lermontov. He was a depressive and sensitive person who died in a duel when he was twenty-six. Despite of his young age, he has managed to become classical Russian novelist. The most significant novel of his is A Hero of Our Time. Um, the order of all five parts of the book is intentionally broken, and when the students get lost in the sequence, they read special editions where the chronological order is observed. The main hero, Pichorin, seems to be an antagonist, rather a protagonist. He is arrogant, selfish, unhappy, indifferent to life and treats other people badly. Some critics say he is a controversial character, but I don't see eye to eye with him. I think he's negative. And now let's pay attention to the quote. In the first place, his eyes never laughed when he laughed. Have you ever noticed this peculiarity some people have? It is, it, it is either the sign of an evil nature or of a profound and lasting sorrow. Number 8. Vladimir Nabokov He was a scandalous writer who was forbidden in the USSR. How so? His novel Lolita told the story of a middle-aged man who fell in love with a teenage 13-year-old girl and it was inappropriate to discuss such topics in the Soviet Union and even nowadays some people disapprove of Nabokov. And one more peculiar thing about him was that the first, at first Lolita was written in English because uh, Vladimir 
moved to the USA. And only after that, he translated it into Russian, his native language. The writer himself saw nothing wrong in his book. He considered Lolita to be an innocent girl whose life and childhood was ruined by the pervert Gumbert. Um, I don't like Lolita myself, but I have to tell you about this novel because it's very popular, world famous, so that you could decide whether to read it or not. And now, here goes the quote. Life is short. From here to that old car you know so well, there is a stretch of 20, 25 paces. It is a very short walk. Make those 25 steps. Now, right now, come just as you are, and we shall live happily ever after. Number 9. Boris Pasternak. This writer was also forbidden in the USSR. His most recognized novel, Dr. Zhivago. Uh, I think it's splendid. I read it when I was eight, uh, I don't know, 15 or 16, and I still liked it, though it's really enormous. It's like a bookish series, and it tells a very huge period of uh, life of Soviet people from the beginning of the 20th century till the Second World War. And now let me read you my most favorite quote about dreams. It is usually taken for granted that you dream of something that has made a particularly strong impression on you during the day, but it seems to me it's just the contrary. Often it's something you paid no attention to at the time. A vague thought that you didn't bother to think out to the end. Words spoken without feeling and which passed unnoticed. These are the things that return at night, clothed in flesh and blood, and they become the subjects of dreams, as if to make up for having been ignored during waking hours. You may ask me why Dr. Zhivaga was forbidden in the USSR. It's very simple. It didn't match the ideas of social realism and communism. Number 10. Ivan Bunin. I advise you to read his short stories. Try the collection of stories called Dark Avenues. I loved them when I was a teenager myself and sometimes from time to time I reread these stories. And Ivan Bunin was awarded the Nobel Prize. It's one more selling point in his favor. That was it. If you are still here and you are not having a tedious time, thanks a bunch. I really appreciate it. Um, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up and write in the comments below whether you have read these or other Russian books. See ya!